welcome back to our 340 writing lessons. This week we are looking at analyzing and supporting details. And in this lesson, we are going to be looking at examples of different ways we can support our opinions. So in this lesson, we will analyze some supporting details and determine if they are good and relevant. Those are the two words we're going to be talking about a lot today, good and relevant. And then we're also going to be learning about different methods for supporting an opinion. All right, so let's get to it. The materials you're going to need today are simply your notebook for taking notes and your writing workbook to upload the screenshot of your form results. So let's get to it. Let's look back at Sheikh Halfan's essay about how to find happiness. You remember that? Of course you do. We've read it so many times now. But today we're going to be focusing just on this second body paragraph and looking closely at Sheikh Halfan's supporting details. So let's have a look here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to determine what is the main idea of this body paragraph. We've talked about this a lot, so it should be pretty easy for us. As always, I'm going to go into my topic sentence, that first sentence of my paragraph, and that's probably, hopefully, going to give me the main idea of this paragraph. And if I look, I also believe that we can only be happy if we live in the present and not some faraway future. Yes, that is Sheikh Khalfan's second opinion about how to find happiness, that we need to live in the present and not so far away future. All right, so let's have a look at his details now to see how he supports this opinion. All right, so here, I have some different methods that Sheikh Khafan used to support his opinion. Because it's not, oh, it's not just enough to say this is what I believe, or this is what I think, or this is my opinion. You have to be able to support that opinion with good and relevant details, explanations, and examples. So we're gonna look at some different ways of doing that. The first way is we're gonna see the Sheikh Halfan use if sentences. So we're going to be talking more about the if conditional and the first conditional next week in our lessons. We're going to really dig down deep into what it means. But we all understand that an if sentence says, if this happens, this happens. So we often use if sentences when we're giving our opinion because we're saying this is the result we want to happen, so you need this part, the if part, to happen first, so you get this good result. And our result that we're looking for here is finding happiness. So does Sheikh Khalfan use if sentences to explain his opinion about that we need to live in the present and not some far away future? Of course he does. We wouldn't have it there if he didn't. He Right here in his last sentence, or the last two sentences actually, he uses two different if clauses. If we want to be happy, so this is the thing we want to happen, then what should we do? We must see and enjoy wonderful things right now. So that brings us back to that idea of that we need to live in the present right now. Then he says the opposite idea. If we spend our time worrying about the past or the future, here's that not some far away future, what's the result gonna be? We'll never find happiness. Well, that's bad. That's not what I want. So here, Sheikh Khalfan uses the if clause in both ways to show us if you do this, you'll find happiness. But if you do this, you won't find happiness. So he's kind of showing us how he has that belief, how he supports that opinion that we need to live in the present. So he does use if sentences. Another thing he uses is he explains his main idea. What does he mean by living in the present? What does he mean by this? Well, he gives us some explanations here. He talks about how 
people spend their whole lives waiting for happiness. He explains they work hard to achieve their goals, but when they reach them, they feel empty and disappointed. So he's explaining why we should not live in this far away future because we work and we work and we work and then we get the goal and we're still disappointed. Yeah. So that's how he's explaining that idea. And then finally, he gives us some examples of what he means, what sort of things that people work towards that then maybe doesn't make them happy. And what he does that right here, let's do green, how about that? He says people will be happy when they graduate or get a job or get married or get more money. So here he's giving us some examples of things that people work for, they, they, they think it's gonna make them happy, and then he goes on to explain, they get it, and then they're still not happy. They still feel disappointed. They still feel empty because they're living in the future. So you see here how Sheikh Khalfa has used three different methods for supporting his opinion. Great. There's other methods we could use as well in addition to if clauses, explanations, and examples. You can use definitions. So for example, most people define happiness as a feeling of joy or laughter. So what is happiness? I'm trying to explain that. So something that makes me feel joyful or makes me laugh, therefore would make me happy. Another example or another method you could use for supporting your opinion is to actually use some numbers and statistics. We're talking about how opinions are mine. They're not facts but I can use facts, I can use data, I can use research to support my position. So for example, studies show 78% of people report feeling happy after spending time with family and friends. So if I'm trying to support the idea that I think happiness comes from spending time with family and friends, I can use the statistic to help support that opinion. And another method, there's lots of others, but another method you could use is stories. So kind of the opposite of statistics, of data, of hard science research, is to use a story from your own life. For example, after spending the afternoon with my friends, I felt happier than I had in months. So now I'm using my own life, my own experience to support why I, I have this opinion. Great, so we can see we have lots of different ways that we can support our opinion. The most important thing though is that we want to be sure that those ideas are good and relevant. So we're going to do an activity where we have to decide, is the supporting reason good and is it relevant? Which relevant means it's connected to the opinion. So here we have an opinion statement. Junk food should be banned at universities and colleges. This is my opinion. No more junk food, right? But then I have to support that reason, not just because I hate fun, right? That's not a good reason. What is my reason for wanting to ban junk food at university and colleges? Well, here's a supporting reason. If you're trying to lose weight, you should eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. Hmm. Is that a good and relevant supporting detail? No. Yeah, okay, junk food is bad for you, and if you're trying to lose weight, you probably shouldn't eat junk food, but does it really support why it needs to be banned at universities and colleges, right? I need to have something that's going to be relevant to this point. So something about how university students need to be healthier, right? University student health, maybe something about how junk food uh, makes students unhealthy and then they can't study. That would be a relevant uh, supporting reason. But trying to lose weight has nothing to do, that's not connected at all with universities, right? Good. So I think we understand where we're coming from. So now it's your turn. Go down below and you've got there's eight more examples of some opinions and some supporting details. And all you're going to decide is, is the supporting detail good and relevant? Yes or no? All right, so go and do that and then we'll come back and we'll check and we'll see how you did. Good luck.